Two testing one two. How do you do? Hello, welcome back again. This is part two of that counting cycle step five, which is journalizing and posting adjusting entries. So last time we explained what accrual accounting is, we got into time period assumption, and we looked at the uh, four different types of adjusting entries, those relate into deferrals, and those relate into accruals. Deferrals, as we know now, are postponements. Um, and just a quick review, postponing of what? As far as expenses, you are postponing the use or consumption of that expense. As far as revenues, you are postponing the delivery of the service or, or sorry, the delivery of the product or the provision of the service. And for accruals, you are advancing. Accruals are advancement. So what are you advancing as far as revenues? You are advancing the performance obligation. You are advancing the performance obligation before cash is exchanged. Uh, as far as expenses, you are postponing the payment of those expenses, even though you have already used them. And we are going to take a look at some examples that hopefully will satisfy your curiosity. Young accountants out there, or maybe just business students looking to just sneak by an accounting course because it's a fucking requirement all right sorry i don't mean to curse you yes i do all right so let's go here uh types of adjusting entries so here we have a trial balance last time we talked about the need for these adjusting entries and as it says on this beautiful powerpoint uh, that sometimes these balances are not up to date. Why? Because some of these accounts we did not make journal entries for throughout the period. Some of them expire with the passage of time. And journal entries cost money because somebody has to do them, right? Even if you're using a computer. And sometimes we have millions and millions of journal entries and for minute things like supplies as we will see here so it doesn't make sense to um, <coughs> make a journal entry every time somebody goes to the supply closet and grabs something it's just too time consuming and it's not worth it so what we do is do an adjusted entry at the end and we can get away with it types of adjusted entries again deferrals expenses the main thing here for deferrals is that you paid for the expense but you have not used it yet um, and for revenues um, you received the cash you received the money the moolah but you have not provided your end of the bargain the performance obligation the delivery of the product or the provision of the service that you promised right that's why they paid you the cash unless they're suckers so two types of deferrals um, prepaid expenses and unearned revenues and just to reiterate that's a word that's how you pronounce it anyways cash payment before the expense is recorded okay so this is for prepaid expenses under deferrals soon as you see the word prepaid expenses that should automatically be deferral okay so here we have some examples prepayments okay we have insurance prepaid insurance supplies it's just supplies uh, prepaid advertising we have prepaid rent building and equipment you'll see all these things when it comes to uh, deferrals okay so let's go ahead and you see what I you see the pattern here sometimes um, where I say that excuse me uh, these expenses really expenses uh, become assets and really most of these assets with the exception of cash and accounts receivable, excuse me, these are allergies, um, are uh, prepaid expenses in reality, okay? So, let's take a look at an example. And this is just 
repetition. Repetition is key in accounting. So prepaid expenses, as it says here, expire with the passage of time. That just an entry affects an income statement account and an asset account. An income statement account and an asset account. Let's see what happens, okay? Here we have an example. Pioneer Advertising Inc. purchased supplies costing $2,500 on October 5th. Pioneer recorded the purchase by increasing debit in the asset supplies. Okay, so this is the original. Okay, that first part, that first, uh, the first two sentences, uh, those are the originals. Okay, the original journal entry when you bought these supplies. So you would debit supplies for twenty five hundred, and uh, depending on whether you purchased them outright for cash or on account, you would do uh, decrease to cash, which is an asset, or an increase to accounts payable, which is a liability, showing that you're going to pay in the future, okay? You receive the supplies, that's good. This account shows a balance of 2500 in the October 31st trial balance, okay? So this is when we prepare the trial balance. So this is... Um, the first two sentences, this is throughout the normal period. This is what happened. We purchased supplies. And then at the end of that period, uh, they're just making it a month here for simplicity. We prepared the trial balance, and that balance showed 2500 Okay? The same as what we bought for on October 5th. Well, wait a minute. Uh, we used some of these supplies, so that balance is incorrect. You should know that uh, in your mind, right? Unless you really didn't use it. But most companies and most businesses tend to use their supplies that's what they bought them for right so an inventory count at the close of the business on October 31st reveals that 1,000 of supplies are still on hand so we have 1,000 left okay so we must have used 2,500 minus 1,000 we must have used 1,500 you see how that works and this is a perfect example of an expense that you use every day, but you're not going to make a journal entry every time you go to the supply closet and um, book that journal entry. It's too time consuming. It's not worth it. So what you do is just know what you had at the beginning, count what you had at the end. The difference is what you used up, and that transfers to the supplies expense account from supplies. This is what you use. So... You would do a debit to supplies expense to show an increase in supplies expense. That's what you used. And a decrease to this asset account, supplies, which is um, an asset account. Uh, and you decrease it by the same amount, 1500 what you used up. So now it's no longer prepaid uh, an asset. It becomes what it really is, which is an expense. That is the need for this adjusted entry. And as you can see, we still do steps one, two, um, and three of the um, accounting cycle. Okay, here we analyze. So basic analysis: the expense supplies expenses increased by fifteen hundred, and the asset supplies decreased fifteen hundred. Okay, and then we have the equation analysis or tabular analysis, whatever you want to call it. Supplies decreased by fifteen hundred. Uh, supplies expense increased by 1500 here they show it as a negative because they're talking about the entire accounting equation if you remember for the entire accounting equation in totality supplies uh, or sorry the expenses will get subtracted from stockholders equity that's why they have it as a negative here okay that's why they have it as a negative so the accounting equation is in balance good good um, and then we do the debit and credit uh, analysis, which you already did in the journal entry, okay? Debits increase expenses, as it says here. So supplies expenses increased. Credits decrease in asset. We're just transferring from supplies to the supplies expense, which is what supplies really should have been, but we prepaid for it. So now it, becomes, uh, it became an asset when we originally purchased it. But now we are correcting that by this adjusting entry. 1500 1500 and then uh, that's a journal entry as you saw in the previous slide and then we post it to the respective accounts supplies supplies expense and now you can look at the supplies uh, ledger okay started with 2500 we made that just an entry which is uh, the expense that we used out of supplies okay or the portion that we used out of supplies and now the balance in supplies agrees um, the ending balance and supplies agrees with 
what we have on hand based on the count okay based on the count it says 1000 and in the ledger our balance is 1000 supplies expense that's a one and done um, we have an adjusted entry and then you have a balance of 1500 this will get eliminated when we prepare um, when we do closing entries it will get eliminated uh, and you will see that uh, when we work through that counting cycle some more fun yeah yeah fun the counting is fun right okay so now we go to another prepaid expense on October 4th uh, Pioneer Advertising Inc paid 600 for a one-year fire insurance policy coverage began on October 1st Pioneer recorded the payment by increasing debit and prepaid insurance this account shows a balance of 600 in the October uh, 31st trial balance insurance of $50 expires each month okay so basically the same as supplies okay here we have a one year uh, $600 um, dollar insurance policy so you just take 12 uh, 600 divided by 12 that's $50 a month right $50 a month and only one month expired which is uh, the month of October okay that's when our period ends October 31st so originally what we did was debit prepaid insurance and then um, every time it says paid um, that's cash okay so uh, we did prepaid insurance, uh, debited, and then cash credited uh, for that 600, 600. Okay, that's our original journal entry. Now that just in general entry, you have to think about the original because it will help you out. Okay, whatever you debited in the original, right? Whatever you debited in the original, as far as prepaid expenses, is going to be credited. Uh, and that just an entry so in this case we debited prepaid insurance but now we have to decrease it to reflect that we use fifty dollars worth of this prepaid insurance policy so um, we credit prepaid insurance and then we transfer it to what it really is which is an expense right insurance expense in this case you can call it whatever you want prepaid insurance expense doesn't matter okay as long as you're consistent it's okay okay so fifty dollars fifty dollars that's for that month and we are happy with that and we can move on to the next period which is November 1st to November 31st or whenever November ends okay um, let's take a look at the uh, full analysis of this okay so basic analysis the expense insurance expense is increased fifty dollars okay that's what we used up and asset prepaid insurance has decreased fifty dollars right because we transferred it from an asset to an expense account because that's what it really is equation analysis um, an asset account decreased to in totality out assets uh, decreased by fifty dollars uh, stockholders equity insurance expense increased by 50 but we're talking here about the totality of stockholders equity so that decreased by fifty dollars okay so in the bold the elements that represents the financial statements when you're talking about the financial statements we are talking about accumulation uh, the totality of all these accounts when you are talking about equation analysis and stuff like that, when you're talking about the specific accounts, it may be an increase or decrease, okay? But even though insurance expense increased on its own in the ledger and in its respective account, when it comes to stockholders' equity, it will be decreased from the totality of stockholders' equity. Now we go to debit and credit analysis. Debits increase expenses. Remember the rules, right? That's in a previous video. Go look that up. Debit insurance expense fifty dollars that increases it. Okay, uh, credits decreased assets. We are going to decrease an asset in this case, and it's prepaid insurance, as you saw in the journal entry, which is down here. So insurance expense uh, debited, prepaid insurance credited fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. That's it. Then we move on to the ledger and post these. So prepaid insurance started out with six hundred. Uh, one month of that expired. That's what we used the fifty dollars, right? Uh, so that's credited and then the ending what well, we have left of this unused prepaid insurance unconsumed prepaid insurance is five hundred and fifty dollars right uh, insurance expense increased by fifty dollars that's what we used up for expenses we want to know this stuff right well, what did we spend on insurance fifty dollars um, and then um, 
that transfers over to the balance. In this case, it's a T account. Usually for a ledger, it would be extended and the balance would be on the uh, right side, right? But here we're just using simple T accounts, so that's a $50 balance. And that's pretty much it. That's one example for prepaid expenses. At this point, I'm going to end this video. And when I return, we will take a look at unearned uh, revenues, okay? unearned revenue so i will see you in the next video so this is part two that will be a part three four five maybe okay we'll see so i'll see you in the next video subscribe like all that jazz okay and then pay me